but I fell into that same flawed fantasy that detached myself from daddy's bedtime stories and mommy singing me to sleep. It was gonna be the key that's gonna set me free. But look, you want out so badly right now, baby girl, but just you wait and see how much you miss your mom and dad once you finally get the chance to leave. I want to go home to my own bed tonight to sleep and cuddle with my puppy. I miss my puppy, all right? I want to make believe that she is a girl sleeping next to me like I used to when I was lonely, like I was lucky enough to have somebody there next to me to keep me company when I woke up in the morning and hold me. But now I'm, well, I'm buried in the arms of someone else and missing mothers. And I miss the weathered hands of my dad while holding tightly to my lovers. And we call this free. But now, I'm 18. I am, uh, I'm 21, baby. You want to see my ID? I'm going to buy all of my own cigarettes. In fact, two packs, please. Look, two packs for those two years I already ran myself broke. And two more for the two more. I'm going to count on these to cope. I'll take two packs for those two days that I'm planning on being away. I'm going to smoke them both the first so that on the second I could get my lungs a break. Gosh, that is always the plan anyway. Um, you know what? On second thought, I better get two more just in case on that second day when I wake, I decide to smoke all in. But a Jack and Coke would go so nicely right now because I have been drinking a little bit to try to forget about the fact that I have been drinking a little bit to try to forget about the fact that I have been drinking a little bit to try to forget about the fact that... Uh, <laughs> I drank a lot. <laughs> I actually had to forget about the fact that I'm dead. It's funny how perspectives change so quickly when you're the one with your head beneath that toilet seat, wearing that crown on your feet. And as I lift up my head from that bathroom sink, I sink into the mirror and scream, You don't know me! And Paul said it perfectly. I am the worst of these. But every now and then, I swear, I think I got that guy beat. And I used to be such a fan of abstract poetry, but that quiet, clouded, kind of confusing painting went from this diluted grayscale to a vibrant honesty pretty quickly and in fact I'm a little sickly and in fact I'm a little scared sometimes that this is all gonna be in vain with a million little me's running around all of eternity it's no wonder my hope has such a bad name I know no matter how large a hypocrite or how small my faith when you started to talk about perfection the way you talked about my pain you became the it came for him to change, and I pray every day that there is power in prayer. And I hope with all my heart that my heart's going to find you there. And if you're really bigger than my skepticism, then how dare I compare that hot that I prescribe with that beauty you prepare. But I am a skeleton in a little fragile skin, and my God is only as big as I let him be. And I am not going to limit my God with my disbelief. My God has always, always been there for me, and I am not going to limit my God with uncertainty. I don't have much. Yeah, it might amount to a mustard seed. I beg for miracles and then I breathe. I scream for signs and wonders and then my heart keeps its beat. You gotta go through that fire and be refined. There's a huge sense of helplessness and a hopeless time. Well, I am yours and you are mine and we are one in a kind. So, so sang the birds and the bees when I was not strong enough to sing anything. If you can provide for the least of these, then how much more will you look over me? I don't have much, but it might amount to a mustard seed. And I've seen you move mountains and command the winds and waves of the seas on a wind so much smaller than me. Singing, God! Than all the air I breathe, and the world will be, and God is gonna save the day, and all will sing in my glory, in my glory. And I love all that rain. I hate all this dry, wet weather. Fills up my hollow bones just right. I love all 
sleep when I can't sleep at night and I love all your rainy weather it fills up my hollow bones just right and I love all your rainy weather the dripping stings me to sleep and I wish that I could see God cry Christ the last time I saw you cry Tuesday of last week and I wasn't sure why but the sky just kind of opened up and I sat there beneath it in this puddle of mud next to the memory of my favorite swing set as a kid and wondered if it was my fault that you were sad that day and I wonder what I did Jesus the last time I saw you cry was in a dream that I had late last night and I held you tight against my bosom and you wept until I was drenched and I said I'm sorry God I'll never do that again But the other day I met this girl and she talked about love like she actually believed it was real. This child and I, we shared a brief conversation about a few things we thought we could feel. And I do not mean to shatter your naivety, darling, but you have so much yet to see. Little girl, she shook her head and smiled like I was the one that was the child. She said, mister, open up your eyes and I'm going to show you the world. I said, people talk a whole lot, a whole, whole lot about having a vice. Well, I've got three. That's insecurity, depression, and this growing anxiety, she said. Look, I don't mean to cut you off from seeing some one-up here or anything, but I drank so much soda pop as a child, and I'm addicted to caffeine. <laughs> I mean, no, no, mister, I mean, you know that's not what I mean. I mean, at least you maintained your honesty. But little girl, you don't even know what I mean, but the blind were born blind so that one day they can see. And unless you become a child, unless you become like me, you're making excuses for yourself, kid. You're holding on to reasons to stay angry. So what did I used to write about? In sixth grade, when I sat against that fence and watched the world slip away. How me and my imaginary girl sat beneath that weeping willow tree. And watched God's teardrops drip from the branches reaching out to me. Till we were anything but lonely. I love all that rainy weather. It reminds me of being younger. Back when I didn't worry. But I worry more than ever now. And I can't stop pacing these hallways. I can't stop pacing these hallways. My biggest secret is that I don't have any secrets left. And I just wanted one to hold on to so that I can still seem sexy and mysterious to you. I want to be excited about concerts again. I want to beg and scrape for those nickels and dimes and tell my parents that I'm going to be fine. Like, Mom, I am not going to jump in the pit when everyone knows I'm going to jump in the pit. And no, Mom, there is nothing violent about the chariot. My favorite swing set as a kid is a ghost to me, looking up at me, wondering what he did. And as he lets the sand filter through his hands and clumps in the puddle of tears, he's sitting in and we whisper in unison, God, I must have bummed you out again. I love this rainy weather. It reminds me of so many beautiful memories. And just like you said to me, the times that I cry are the times that I feel the most. So if I find another secret to hide, you won't ever know. I want to feel like I can't maintain control. And if I let it all out, I'm going to have to bear my soul. All I want is a hand to hold on to. Man, even the devil, even the devil knows that's a lie. All I wanted was for you to heal my dad's back. Why was it so hard for you to do? I hate this rainy weather. It reminds me of being a kid when I would trust without question. Are there so many questions? Why are there so many questions? Get out of my head. But when she finds those magazines underneath her husband's side of the bed, 
just stand naked in front of the mirror for hours like, well, what did you expect? Bang tongue blonde sexy singles and busty brunettes. I must not be as beautiful as that advertising says. Excuse me, miss. Um, I saw your poster recently. I read your ad in one of Playboy's latest magazines. Actually, I bet pretty much every need that I believe photography could feed me. But if you can believe me, I hate it. You're worse more than my brief moment of orgasm when I allow my mind to deceive me. And look, look, I'd like to be an open book. It's hard for me to admit how I took advantage of the desires God gave me. But I am not going to sugarcoat this. I feel hopeless, trapped in brokenness, like I lost before I ever started racing. I know as well as anybody, this is a difficult topic to be facing, a difficult situation for me to be making, but I'm stating that when God started, the molding, shaping, and creating. You, and 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 you were not designed to be the objects that men look at while masturbating. Forget that you were made for relating. I'm sick of failing and learning exactly what it is I'm saying. I apologize. It was never my intent to ruin lives, compromise, or feed these eyes something other than what was designed. But sometimes, though, I feed that indecency. Just gotta slide that magazine across the counter and do it quietly. I'm gonna shine my face away so the cashier can't see that it's me. <laughs> Like, is that going to be all for you today, sir? Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. I'd like to pay and become the opposite of what I want to be. I should have waited, dedicated to see the experience God had planned for me in the beginning. I'm not patient enough to not give in to every sin forbidden to the hearts of men. I'm just not patient enough to not give in. There I go again, you know. I just apologized. Uh, like five... Five minutes ago, and that was after uh, repenting for last night and this morning. God, come on! What's going on? I'm sick of this! Somebody put some clothes on! You're better than this! God's most beautiful creation! And I'm sitting here euphoric, like I have the right to destroy him just because I don't have enough dedication to build up a relationship with the one that can free me. So I resort to suffocation of my very foundations while claiming that I'm striving to meet the expectations of purity. If you could keep reassuring me, I'm yearning to be that entity that you desire me to be. Jesus, if you could keep reassuring her, the one in the centerfold, the picture I'll remember until I grow old, she is human. Sending so your human your bought and sold to a million empty souls, feeling so hopeless that they'll do anything to fill that hole. I apologize. Please, please, please believe it's true. I never meant to hurt you. But when I was, a uh... When I was six, six, six years old, I saw my first Goosebumps episode on Nickelodeon. That stupid freaking TV show made me so scared of werewolves. I was afraid to walk into the dark for months on end. I guess not a whole lot has changed since then, except for now these monsters are personified within, and I, I go to sleep with them, and I cuddle with them, and I dream about them, and I pretend that I'm seven, seven, seven years old once that fear has finally gone away, until I saw my father's ghost inside my childhood home's window panes, and some silent shadow matter following me around the halls of my house when I was eight, so I held on to the belief there's something dark working around my family to this day. And I used up all 999 lives, so by the tenth time I die, I'm gonna be right by your side. And we'll both agree that we tried to land on our You poor boy. 
I don't even believe in demons. I know, man. I know. Me neither. Nobody does. Nobody, uh, nobody really believes in demons until you see them. But I, uh, I don't smoke that ganja. And I'm not gonna smoke that ganja because one, I don't believe it's what I need. Two, uh, I got married in April. For real though, and my wife would kill me. And three, all of my friends, all of my friends already smoked enough of that weed for two or three of my lifetimes. And I fell apart while I watched them fall apart. So I figure I got enough falling apart in my system already. And I'm scared for my family. I'm scared the werewolves are gonna keep attacking my dad. They already bit him up pretty bad. And the swelling spread into my mom's side of the bed. I've been thinking way too hard lately about getting some meds to help clear up this depression that's clouding my head with those tiny little red and white and black and blue and green and yellow and orange pills scare me half to death. When I was little, my mom hung this elephant on the wall. I know you're not an elephant. And I had to pray to God that it wouldn't eat me in my sleep. I'm getting a little older now and still learning what I think about those depressive tendencies. But I know with all my heart that the same God that kept me alive then is the same one that holds my hand when I'm weak. And he gives me hugs when I weep. And I don't want smoke to be the reason for my rock and roll. And I don't want substance to be the reason my body bleeds. Well, prone to wander. Lord, I feel it! But if you don't hold on to me, I promise, I promise to do my best to keep on trying to believe. So come thou fount of every blessing and to my heart to sing your praise. Streams of mercy never, ever, 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 ever ceasing call for songs of the loudest praise. So teach me some melodious sonnet. Sung by flaming tongues above. Praise the mount I am fixed upon. The mount of your redeeming love. So when I go to meet God, I'm gonna have to be honest. I'll tell you the truth And not a day has gone by That I That I didn't doubt you They always said don't grow up too fast just a boy, but it's better to be in the house of sorrow than the house of joy, and if I can have a heart like David that reflects yours, then what are the odds Solomon's sadness might have creeped in somewhere to even the score? Dear Dad, do you remember when I was always sad? You and Mom called it my depressed year, and I know it was pretty bad. What drives a child to want to give up everything that he has? What makes a person think that? What makes a mother's son decide that death is better than tomorrow? Inside of each and every breath that I borrowed, I held on to the sorrow and thought, man, I'm never going to be able to uh, repay Jesus with the way that I live. And now I'm thinking so much that I screwed this all up. And I don't even know if you exist, so forget it! I may as well not exist! I never told you both that I almost killed myself. I did. I almost drove my car right off that highway bridge. And as I picked up pace, prayed to God that he'd forgive me if I went through with it. This, this is not a life worth living. I already ruined it. Mom, dad, sister, my friends, my family. If you never see me again, I hope you live out your lives happily. Give my dog a kiss on the lips. And all of my writings go to my best friend, Isaac. 
man, look, the ones about me and you are not meant to be kept in private. Make them your own and write your songs and inspire the world the way I wish that I did. And sister, you're beautiful. Don't let them take that away. Don't let yourself become just another face with no name. Get to know Isaac better. You two can collaborate. Besides, your voice is like a million times better than his has ever been anyway. And mom, I'm sorry that the last time we talked, we fought. I'm just so sick and tired of pretending to be somebody that I'm not. And years down the line, when I am all but forgot, you were my last thought. And as I finish that note before I get up to go, Dad, look, I'm sorry I kept all of this pain inside. This is going to hurt you more than anyone else. And when I breathe my last, I'm going to pray that you can forget your past and all of this. And try not to blame yourself. I tried. I tried to find a reason to stay alive. I love you also very, 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 very much. <laughs> but goodbye. God, I am coming to meet you now. I suppose this decision doesn't display much trust. But if you're real and you're really out there, then make me feel like I'm talking to something more than just the ceiling. Dear Mom, I'm getting better. Okay, I'm getting better at writing happier things. I know you'll never understand it, but I'm attached to the sadness, and it rings true when I sing. And there's a little bit of healing inside all of our suffering, as I have a savior that took up our suffering for me. And as I drove down I-40 to collide with 25, I swear to God, something beautiful came alive in me inside. And this memory is enough to make me risk one more night on Christmas morning. On Christmas morning, I don't want my little sister to wake up without her brother by her side. So tear me to pieces, my sweet suicide, for to die is game, but to live is Christ. So I'm going to make you the apple of my eye. When I come to meet you, God, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to tell you the truth, and not a lot of time has gone by that I didn't doubt you. When I come to meet you, God, I am going to come complete as you have completed me. And I am going to come whole. And I am begging to come happy. There is hope for me. There's green grass that grows out of this dead dirt we call ground. And in the times that we're wandering, we're all lost and found people. Life pours itself out from lost and found hands and from lost and found hearts and from lost and found beautiful, created works of art. I believe in a maker that makes people out of clay, makes creators out of clay, makes makers out of clay, and I think that he molds them all into a million different shapes, molds that clay into change. I believe in a breather that breathes life into nothing, a breather that breathes breath into a life that's worth something. This is worth something! Right? This is worth something. This is not all meaningless. We may all be dust in the wind, but the dust spins in the breath of a speaker who knows where the particles lie and in one word reassembles them again. Thank you guys very much. I'm Levi the Poet.
I'd love to talk to you at any point in time. And a lot of people say that. And sometimes I wonder if I'm telling the truth when I say it. But this time I really am. <laughs> so thank you guys very much. offensive to them and they feel demeaned and sad and 